Greetings, comic friends. Welcome to uh, a special, extra special episode of I've Got the Runs. This is a video I've been making for a long, uh, wanting to make for a long time, and just never kind of got around to it. Uh, just because it's just kind of there's a lot going on here, uh, and now seemed like the perfect time. Because if everything goes to plan, I'll have something coming up this week that is a sort of a celebration of, of this. So for longtime viewers of the channel, you'll know that I think it was a couple years ago, uh, I think, I, f I finished my full run of Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, it was a long journey. There's a lot of videos back um, around that time where I did a countdown to getting the, the the run complete. So if you're interested in those, please please go go search for them. Um, and in general, you know that I like collecting runs. So um, more recently, I finished my run of Incredible Hulk, uh, and I am fairly close to finishing my run of Daredevil will be my three sort of biggest full runs once once that one's complete. Uh, I also have some smaller full runs that that maybe aren't quite as huge, but they are very important to me because I love the characters. Uh, Submariner, Howard the Duck, uh, and, and some other ones in there. So something that I decided to do because completing these runs is, is really such a momental occasion is I, I wanted to have a way to more personalize them um, and, and always have a reminder of them. So what I'm going to do is for each of these big runs that I have completed, I am going to get a tattoo. Uh, now, I, I have one tattoo, which people have probably seen right before, um, right here. It's the only one that I have. I've been one, there's, I have ideas for other ones as well. But this seemed like a, a really good way to personalize these collections. And tie them specifically not to the character, ju or just to the character, but to the comics themselves. So what I'm going to do is, you know, for... for um, Marvel pre, I think up through maybe the late eighties, nineties, up in the upper left-hand corner of the books, there would be an image of the character or characters that were, um, that it was, but that the title belonged to, um, the price box or, or whatever price box image. I, I, I don't know if there's a, a specific term for it. But out of those runs, I wanted to take my favorite of those, either because it was my favorite image or it was during the time period of that, of that run that I enjoyed the most. But I'm going to get that image tattooed um, probably on my forearm. Uh, once I have enough of them, I'll probably get something to tie them all together to make it sort of a, um, a half sleeve or, or something like that. I haven't started yet. Spider-Man is going to be the first because it's my my biggest it's it's the crown jewel of my collection and it's also the first like huge huge run I mean, it's the biggest run that that I, I have obviously so i'm going to start with that the image i'm going to get is this this image here um, so for me this i don't know this is sort of the most iconic of these images for Spider-Man. I think it's interesting. It's like, it's him just standing there, right? I think when most people think of getting a, a, a tattoo of Spider-Man, you're going to get some sort of action pose or something. Uh, but this is a very powerful image for me. It's also during, it, it spanned the silver and bronze age, which I think is great. Bronze is my favorite era of Spidey. I think is what defined the character the most and having the most iconic stories. Obviously, silver is important um, because it's you know the origins and where his greatest villains come from and, and all of that. 
But as far as character defining stories and arcs go, Bronze Age is, is it. So this week, and if all goes to plan, I'm going to get this image tattooed. And I, this, I, I picked this book, this particular book, because it kind of showed it the most prominently and clearly of kind of what I was looking through to, to grab. This issue itself is nothing spectacular. Um, it's something. Is this the first spider buggy? Might be the first spider buggy. Uh, but yeah, gonna going to get that tattooed on my forearm. I'm gonna talk to the artist and let them uh, tell them what my plan is and help them uh, have them help me decide size and and where to put it. But I'm definitely thinking right right here. So with his his head up towards uh, my my elbow. So when my arm is down, you see you see spider-man so the, the the video that i've been wanting to make for a while is you know when, when i when i finished my run of spider-man one thing i wanted to make sure i had is i wanted one through 20 slabbed and that took a little while uh because you know some of these books i bought slabbed probably the majority of them i had purchased raw so had to get them slabbed and i got the last one slabbed quite a while ago like I said, I've been meaning to do this video for a while, but it just hasn't happened. And then again, this this sort of occasion of, of getting this first tattoo in, in this series seemed like a really good time to go ahead and do that. And it gave me a chance to talk about my tattoo plan, so it uh, worked out. So without further ado, this is my all slabbed Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 20. And... 20, why 20? Why not just 10 or whatever? Uh, well, up through, you know, I mean, up through 14, 15, you're still having significant uh, first appearances with Green Goblin um, and and Craven, respectively. And I wanted it to be a nice even number. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 aren't super significant. I think 20 is what for Scorpion, I think, is where it ends at. But it just seemed like a, a, a good stopping point. Uh, and I think, so, like, Scorpion, because it is a significant key, I wanted that slabbed anyway. So it just it just seemed like that was uh, the, the, the uh, stopping point that, that made the most sense. Uh, and when I can, I'll talk about the issues a little bit when I rem if, if I kind of remember if there's any backstory to them at all. Some of them, again, I just, like... I bought it because it was I needed it in the run. It doesn't have any sort of significance to it, other than, than that, which is significant enough in my opinion. But uh, how do we want to do this? Count down, count up. I have them in, in numerical order, so I'll count up. So the first one, and obviously the biggest one, is Amazing Spider-Man number one, uh, which I have as a four. This, unbelievably enough, is the first book that I got in one through twenty. I got this way before I decided to go for a run. Um, I got this quite a while ago, um, back when I was working at a comic shop, and when stuff was much cheaper than it is today, <coughs> I, 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 pur I purchased it in a, a larger deal that included this, Tales of Suspense 39, Fantastic Four 48, Fantastic Four 2 and uh, Flash 123. And I think an Aquaman 2 was in there as well. But a collection had come in, and these were all there, so I made a deal with the owner to get to get those. So, and, and it was my very, very first huge comic purchase, and I, I, I think I've made a, um, a video about, you know, this individual issue talking kind of about that. So that's back in the archives somewhere um, as well, if, if you're interested. Uh, but this was a big deal to me, you know, when I, it was a significant amount for the time, nowhere near what it would cost today, but I was much younger. Spending that amount of money at once on something like comics was not an easy decision at all, even, even though it was much cheaper than it would be today. For me and where I was in life at that time, it was, it was significant. It was significant. So number one, it came back a 4.0. Um, I did not, uh, I bought this raw. I did not clean and press this because I had got this and sent it in to get slabbed before I was doing cleaning and pressing. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't, 
improve it at all. Um, the biggest thing, obviously, is this corner that's torn out here. With that, I don't think it can get above a four anyway. But besides that, it already is. It's it's very clean, and there's there's not a whole lot that could uh, it could benefit from with a clean and press. Maybe a little bit of spine adjustment, but and it's it's definitely not not worth doing, uh, especially you know one the risk of you know maybe it coming back lower or something, but the cost of resabling a book of that value now is is really high. That brings us to uh, also I'll mention having this in a 4.0 set a standard for me and that I wanted my one through 20 or any con um, significant issue to be a 4.0 at least, right? I figured if my number one is a four, I can get the other ones uh, at least that or higher. And unfortunately that didn't happen. We'll get to that when we get to that. But the majority of these, all but one, you'll see as at least a 4.0. And when I was going for the early issues, that was my target. I, 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 I wanted at least a 4, and I think a 4 presents very well in, in, this, in, in this Silver Age. Uh, and obviously I was trying to budget the best that I could because I wanted to get <laughs> the full run. Uh, so number two, also a four, first appearance of the Vulture. This one, I mean, this has some major Marvel chipping on it, but other than that, it presents very, very well. This one, I believe I purchased slabbed. I just, it was a 4.0 slabbed, probably a buy it now of some kind. I thought the price was decent, so I got it. Nothing else more significant to say about that particular book. Uh, this is, because of the grade, is probably the second most valuable I have in the 1 through 20. And that is number 3, which is a 6.5. So this, you know, I, I, my target was a 4. When I purchased this is when stuff really started to spike during quarantine. And I really wanted to get this book. I think it was like the second to last book I needed. And it was like, I just, I, I, I want to get this. And things were trending up. I don't want it to go for much, like you know, a whole bunch more in the future and, and really cost me. Hindsight, I should have waited. Things have cooled down. But in the moment, you don't know. So I paid a lot more for this than I wanted to. Not, not because... This particular copy was overpriced, but because the grade was high, it's more than I wanted to spend on an ASM-3. But, like, I want to get it done. I want to get it out. Uh, and, and was fearful that if I waited, I'd have to spend a lot more on a lower grade, potentially a lower grade book. So, but first Doc Ock, very, very important issue. Doc Ock, obviously, probably along with, with um, Green Goblin, his most significant villain in the silver to bronze age um i would guess number four is the first appearance of sandman um this also nothing super significant uh, as far as a purchasing experience i i bought it slabbed and it was it matched the 4.0 target i was looking for it was a decent price so i pulled the trigger Number five, also a 4.0. This is a crossover with Dr. Doom, uh, which makes this a little bit more significant. Uh, this, I think I purchased this raw. I think I purchased this raw and, well, I don't know. With that, I usually don't get those labels, so maybe I... No, I'm pretty sure I purchased this raw. You know what? I might be thinking of Fantastic Four number five. I purchased raw and had graded. I, I honestly don't remember on this one. Uh, now that I think about it, I'm leaning towards I bought it slabbed is my guess because of that label. But at the same time, I might have been like, oh, this is a significant issue. Maybe they put a label on it. It doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 5 out of 4.0. Uh, you know, now that I look at this, this actually may have been the first book that I bought in 1 through 20 long, long ago. 
Amazing Spider-Man number six out of seven. First appearance of the Lizard, who I love. Lizard is one of my favorite Spidey villains. That might have been influenced because I had this book. <laughs> uh, and I've had it for so long. But I also love, love the cover of this. Um, I am... Pretty sure I bought this slabbed. This and this was this was back probably around the time I got the one. I don't remember which one came first. Probably this one. This one probably came first. So this was like in mid two thousands when stuff was a little bit more reasonable. Number seven. So this is the second appearance of Vulture. This one uh, I definitely bought raw and pressed and cleaned because I think it, I, I was doing that when I got this. And I was very, I remember being very happy when it came back a seven. Um, I was a little bit surprised because there is maybe a little bit of water damage on the back and the spine isn't perfectly aligned. So when this came back a seven, I was like, holy crap, okay. The cleaning and pressing, this is, you know, this is, this is legit. Um, but other than that, nothing super significant. Second appearance of Vulture. Still a great book, obviously. It's in, you know, the, the first 10. But I think out of these is the first book out of the 20 in the series that I cleaned and pressed. Number eight. Uh, this, I think, is a underappreciated issue. It does not have a huge first appearance. It's the first appearance of the living brain. It has the fight between uh, uh, Peter and Flash. Let's see, Fantastic Four appearance. For me, I, I mean, I, I just I love this cover. It's a little bit different than the others, which is all just one image. This is broken up into parts of the story. It's also a yellow cover, which yellow is my favorite cover color so it really pops for me uh, this one I did by raw and cleaned and pressed it uh, I, I was figuring I'd get a four on it and there are a lot of issues with it I was worried there was something going on in the back cover which I didn't understand uh, and you can't see it because it's on the interior but it looks like there is a separate piece of paper that is glued to it and it kind of sticks out a little bit. You can't really see it on it. And I did a lot of research and I couldn't figure out what it was, but it, from what I can gather, I think it's part, it's part of the paper roll and where it got towards the end of the paper roll and there was like maybe tape or not tape, uh, like a sticker on it. So I was like, I don't know exactly what this is. It's not restoration because it's not like, it's just something that's stuck to it. So I didn't know how that was going to affect grade because I couldn't really explain it. But it came back to four, which is what I expected, what I wanted. So I was happy with it. Up next, number nine is the blemish in my collection. That is... It came back a three. This one I bought raw, cleaned and pressed, and uh, it did not come back a four. It came back a three. Uh, I think um, it's it's understandable. I was hopeful. There's some water damage. There's a tear. There is a bit of a tear on the back. I think if it was just one of those two tears, it might have come back a 3.5 or a four. But with everything combined, it only came back a four. Um, there's also a piece of tape on interior cover. So that, that probably significantly put it as well. Um, I can't remember. I don't, I don't remember the tape. It might, have, it might have been like on the back of where that, that tear is. So this is, this is something I hoped at one day to replace. I, I'm, I don't know if I will uh, for a couple of reasons. Now, at this point, I've kind of calmed down about the 4-0 minimum. It would be nice because everything else in here is at least a 4. 
but I would have to find probably a raw copy because I don't want to pay too much for it um, with the way that prices are now. Like, I could not have done this in today's market. Uh, or at least I wouldn't have. It wouldn't have been worth it for sure. Uh, I, I mean, I got lucky in a lot of these I purchased in the past before things super spiked. Most of the, the super significant keys I had already. So filling in the others while expensive, uh, I didn't have to purchase those many of those really, really big ones. So I, I definitely probably wouldn't do this today. Uh, and replacing number nine, the first Electro, which I don't care that much about Electro. Just the 3.0 is fine. Next, number 10, I think another underappreciated book is The First Appearance of the Enforcers. <clears throat> um, Big Man and the Enforcers. The other members of the Enforcers, uh, if I recall correctly, appeared in other places before this. Uh, maybe not, but another great cover, another great Spidey in action image. And I think the Enforcers are great. You know, they're not as exciting as some of his other villains, but this really, I, I love Spider-Man when he's like total street level and the Enforcers are complete street level. They're not super powered. They have very good skills. Ox is very big and strong, but he's not super powered. So I really, really like the Enforcers. And I think, I think this book is... Uh, underappreciated. Um, this I purchased slabbed. Next is number 11, which is the second appearance of Dr. Octopus and first appearance in Death of Bennett Brandt. Death. This is a pretty significant one. Uh, this was actually the last book that I got in my run. My, my full ASM run, not just the one through 20, but the entire entire run. Uh, I did buy this raw, cleaned and pressed it, sent it in. Uh, I got it on eBay on auction. Uh, I felt I got it, ended up getting it for a fair price. Uh, if I remember correctly, I estimated it in that four to five range from what I could see from the images. And it came in at the 4.5, you know, a four to five after a clean press sort of thing. Um, or, you know, I could get it to a four to a five and got it to a 4.5, which is good. Uh, issue, I mean, there is some fading over here. There's, you can, I mean, you can see spine issues uh, even this far back, but uh, it, it did clean and press very nicely. Um, and I, I think it definitely uh, helped the grade. So I was happy with this, but getting this in my collection was important. It was, if I recall correctly, the last one that I got for the run. And, and it was significant enough, right? It was getting to the point where stuff was starting to heat up really bad. And it's the second appearance of Dr. Octopus. First appearance of Dr. Octopus is way out of a lot of people's ranges. So that puts extra heat on the second appearance. So this was starting to, to build up quite a bit. Um, so uh, it wasn't the cheapest. Um, well, I mean, none of these are the cheapest, but I was lucky enough to find a decently priced raw copy in the shape that I was looking for and, and got it in auction fairly decently. Uh, number 12, this is the third appearance of Dr. Octopus. First time JJJ is on the cover. Another yellow cover. It's beautiful. Um, unmasked. Pretty iconic cover. Uh, this I bought raw. Pretty much anything you see on CBCS is probably I bought raw and, and cleaned and pressed it and graded it myself. That might not be, as I look at the next one, may not be entirely true for all of them, but I'm pretty sure that was the case for this one. Uh, also, I'll say the, the you know, the, the, the box image, the price box image. Why go with this one instead of the original? Uh, again, for the reasons that I, I mentioned, the, the one that I'm getting um, uh, tattooed is it spans both silver and bronze. And this this image, while iconic and I love it, does not make for a good tattoo because it's so boxed in. Whereas this image, I think, would look look good with other of those box images where it shows the full the full character. 
and tie together better with with all of those with, with what I'm trying to to go for. So that's why I went with that one instead of the um, the original box image. Up next, Amazing Spider-Man number thirteen. This is the first appearance of Mysterio. Uh, I'm pretty sure I bought this slabbed. I know that I've worked on an Amazing thirteen. But I think that was for a customer and not this one. I think I bought this slabbed. Yeah. Next is Amazing Spider-Man 14, which I have at a 5-0 first appearance of the Green Goblin. This is actually the second issue of this that I purchased, unfortunately. Um, way before, not way before this, but a, a, a chunk of time before I ended up getting this. And I think I was, at that time, I, I don't remember if I was going for the run or I was just getting it because it was a significant Spidey key. I purchased a raw copy, a really, really nice looking raw copy for a great price, especially considering what it what, uh, goes went for when I got this and what it goes for today. Uh, from a very reputable vendor. So I got it. I was super happy with it. I sent it in to get graded and it came back as an incomplete. There was a page missing that both the vendor and I missed. So it came back, I think I sent it to C or CBCS, and I can't remember if they graded like graded a 0.5, because I think that's what they do. They'll, they'll put it at a 0.5 It's an incomplete, whereas uh, CGC will put like an NC. Uh, but either way, it was missing a page. And I was devastated. I had no idea. Luckily, Luckily, I contacted the vendor, like, look, if it was a lesser issue, it wouldn't be a big deal. And I, I've done business with this vendor multiple times before and since. So we had a really good rapport. Like, remember, I bought this from you. It turns out it was incomplete. And he, he made it right, uh, which, which was the most important thing to me. Uh, he, I sent him back the book. He refunded me what I paid for it. Huge props to him. That's a hard pill to swallow. Uh, but um, he's he's more than made up <laughs> that money from me in the meantime. So he understands how to run a business. Next is Amazing Spider-Man number 15. This is the first appearance of Craven the Hunter. This uh, I am fairly confident I purchased slabbed. And not much to say about that. Amazing Spider-Man number 16. This book in particular is heating up quite a bit recently with all the news of Daredevil. This I am pretty confident I purchased raw, cleaned and pressed and sent in and got a 6.5. Very happy with that. You know, anything that ends up being in the fine range in these Silver Age books is, is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, and also, a, you know, just a fantastic cover with, with Spidey and Daredevil. Uh, but 6.5 on that, super happy. Next up is number 17, the second appearance of Green Goblin. Uh, this also, for the same reason that number 11 had spiked a bit at the time, uh, 11 being the second appearance of Doc Ock, number 14 was out of the range of a lot of people, so the second appearance goes goes up. Uh, and it, but this still has Green Goblin on the cover, which is which is nice. Um, didn't spike quite as much as eleven, just because it is a little bit later, um, seventeen, you know, before the, the eleven. Uh, but still a, a very important issue in the uh, the one through twenty. Next up is number eighteen, which is the first appearance of Ned Leeds. This, I got raw. I remember being very, very happy with this purchase because I got raw and I put a lot of work into it and that work showed. Uh, I came back a 6.5. I think when I purchased it, it was probably in the four to five range. So uh, a lot of the work that I put into it definitely, definitely paid off and, and came back. A six five. I think this is also one of the much 
later books that I purchased to complete the run. Getting towards the end here. Uh, number 19, this doesn't have, this is probably the least significant of all the books here. Uh, it, it, the first appearance of Matt Gargan, who becomes the Scorpion in the next issue. But other than that, probably the least significant. But in the re so the reason, the only reason I got this graded, normally this I wouldn't have got graded, but the only reason I got it graded is because it was in the range of 1 to 20. And it came back a good grade, 7.5. Uh, and fairly confident that I did get this um, raw and and clean pressed it and sent it integrated. And last but not least, because the last one was least, <laughs> is Amazing Spider-Man number 20, which I got a 5.0 check. So CBCS does this thing where they'll put a check uh, in there if it's like, it's a 5-0, but it's a really good 5-0. It's right on the cusp of being a 5-5, which, I, I mean, I appreciate it. It gives it a little more significance. Not that there's a huge difference between a 5 and a 5-5, five, five, uh, five, but just to know, like, I don't know. It's it's double-edged, right? It's like, oh, I was so close to the next grade up. So, But if it would have been, like, if it's, like, a difference between, like, a 7.5 check and an 8, that would be devastating, <laughs> But the difference between a 5 and a 5.5 five doesn't bother me too much. So that's it. 1 through 20, all graded of um, Amazing Spider-Man. And then this, I, I've had these for a while. I think the last one that I actually ended up getting graded was the 8. If I recall correctly. So I seem to remember, like, once I get that 8 back, then I can do this video, which then I got it back in never did um, but it, it, it mean it's kind of nerve-wracking to have all these out <laughs> to, to be completely honest so i think that kind of deterred me from from doing it and i, and I want to make sure i had enough time to go ahead and, and record this figuring that it would probably go on for a bit um but that's all uh in the the crown jewel of my collection is my amazing spider-man run um I, I, I mean, I, I have the AF-15, which I kind of include in that uh, as the full run of Amazing Spider-Man because, you know, Amazing Fantasy turned into Amazing Spider-Man and obviously the significance of being the first appearance. But the focus here is specifically on the numbers 1 through 20, which, uh, and having all slab, which is just, it's it warms the cuckles of my heart. So that's it. Uh, I mean, this is kind of, just, you know, Showcase, I suppose. Uh, not a lot of places to see all these issues in one place, which I think is kind of cool. And I mean, it's also something for me to go back and watch if I want to enjoy them in a little bit different way than just pulling them out and looking at them. So this is a lot of fun for me to reminisce about my collecting journey and remembering where they all came from, for the most part, those that I specifically worked on and, and had graded. Um, this, is, this is really fun for me of a, you know, th this type of video is really, uh, really fun for me to make. Um, and I might do others like it, you know, with the, um, Hulk and Daredevil once that's, that's complete. Uh, but that's all. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, what is your favorite issue out of, out of all of these? Uh, if you, if you've read them all, which is your favorite story? What's your favorite first appearance in all of these? Uh, you know, obviously Spider-Man isn't first appeared in here, but you do have, uh, what, uh, J. Jonah Jameson, uh, his first appearance is in number one. Um, number one is also first appearance of Chameleon. Um, and or, Origin Retold. So, um, like, comment, subscribe, and start a discussion with me. Let's talk about this stuff. Let's have some fun. Uh, and, uh, of course, don't forget to make yours Titan. This video was brought to you by Titan Comic Pressing. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Titan Comic Pressing LLC.